Has anyone noted that these raccoons from the Energy Petroleum Regulatory Authority, EPRA, seem to be making their announcements? Uh, sometimes uh, when it's during the week, it's after hours, probably from 6 p.m., 7 p.m., and over the weekends. They seem to be the only efficient government agency because in Kenya, don't forget, now the, the government doesn't work over the weekends. In fact, they are so uh, they are so committed that even when holidays fall on Sunday, they are pushed forward to Monday so that we can uh, the, the holiday can holiday very well. But now these ones seems to be the only ones who work over the weekends, and then during the week they always share. Though in fact, there should be a law that forbids the government because I'm seeing all these government uh, agencies, even state house to some extent, they provide or they send these press releases after hours. There should be a law that. These are the uh, <coughs> these serious and pronouncements should be made during the week and on working hours, preferably and no later than 1 p.m., just like the presidential swearing in uh, the way it has been stipulated in the Constitution. So how did we get to where we are, where we are being literally exploited by the government? Because, guys, I told you these Kenya Kusha Shitshu, there is no difference between them and the Moi regime. Eh? The, the only difference is a PR. Now they are able to bribe a few journalists here, a few blogs like Kenyans, you know, to propagate their depravity and uh, mental impotence. But how did you get here? Uh, let's go back to March 16, 2023. There was this circular hmm? uh, nomination of Gulf Energy Limited as a seller under the government to government arrangement. So this is something very weird. When they say government to government, we only see the press releases from the kenyan side uh, those are the, those are if you go and google like now this gulf energy and abu dhabi abu dhabi national oil corporation ad -noc. The, 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 you'll never see a press release from the abu dhabi side but you'll see it from kenya so meaning that this is just a, a company given a blank check to import oil and sell as they wish yeah so this one uh, was signed by, uh, by by the PS, uh, the PS of uh, the principal secretary of the Ministry of Petroleum is called uh, Mohammed Liban. I keep telling you, if you look at look at look at his photo there, yeah, these these boomers will finish this uh, this country because boomers, the people born between 1940 and 70, are retarded individuals because of their uh, mental malnourishment. Hmm? They have uh, intellectual anemia. They cannot think of ways, creative ways to stimulate the economy so that everybody wins. Then they only think about eh, chopping trees. Eh, this is this is the best that they can come up with. That now they give a company blank a, a blank check. You import oil and sell as you wish. And do you know what the what the total of this deal is? It is five hundred billion of half a trillion. Eh? Five hundred billion is equivalent of half half a trillion. And that used to be the national budget of the of, of Kenya barely a few years ago. And now it's being given to one company and the settlement has to be in cash. You see, this is the stupidity. And you can see the people who are uh, copied in that email. This is like the Premier League of corrupt individuals. Eh? You can see Davis Chirchir, Professor Njogun Andongo, Dr. Patrick Joroge, hmm? who now left it to Kamau Thuge. This, we, 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 are, we, are, we are not making it eh, out of the trenches anytime soon. So let's go to Gulf Energy. Who owns Gulf Energy? The ones who've been given a blank check to destroy Kenya. Yeah? Uh, according to an article done by a citizen in April, Gulf Energy Limited was in December 2019 acquired by French multinational firm Rubies Energy. Rubies was associated with the Kenyatta family criminal enterprise. And then later, a search within the Registrar of Communities, however, shows that Gulf Energy has two directors, Francis Kome Njogu and Paul Kiprotich Limo. You see, I told you in Kenya, we have a corruption relay race. So this is the baton. You know a relay race, the ones you see in athletics. This is the baton. They, they go handing to each other. They, they, they are mindful, all these cartels, to not finish for the incoming despots. So... Yeah, they leave. So uh, Kenyatta criminal Jomo Kenyatta left to uh, Moi. Moi left to uh, uh, Kibaki. Kibaki left to Uhuru. And Uhuru, now like these rubies was used to be owned by the Kenyatta family criminal enterprise. Suddenly, it is owned by these two people. Yeah? Well, Paul Kiprotich Limo and Francis Kome Njogu. Francis Kome Njogu is, is a Meru guy. 
Eh, he, he doesn't use the name Kome very much because don't forget how how was EPRA uh, e, uh, incorporated. It was a law passed during the tenure of Kiraito Morongi when he was the Minister of Energy, eh, where they created some artificial shortage, and then Kenyans there was uproar in the media, and then the the, the, the Parliament passed the law incorporating, hmm, creating the Energy Petroleum Regulatory Authority, which instead of doing its mandated job. You saw there is a there is that uh, there is that idiot of EPRA who was talking yesterday with a fake British accent. Instead of doing their their mandated work according to the law, they are following what the cartels are dictating to them. So basically, it's an it's a sitting duck. It should be uh, that law should be repealed. Yeah, I don't know how we are going to get to do, but how can we achieve that when we have? Uh, when we have a uh, sitting duck MPs who just sleep and fart in parliament, you see. So uh, you, uh, uh, now you can see. Uh, yeah, uh, just this week on seventh October, uh, according to the Spectator Index, you see oil prices have recorded their six, their their biggest weekly decline in over six months. So have you ever wondered in Kenya? Have you ever has it ever crossed your mind that any time we have seen uh, the oil prices going down, the benefits are never passed on to the consumer. We never see that reflection in the pump prices. We never see it. But uh, but but any time they go high, any time there is a slight difference. Like now, these idiots of the Kenya Kusha shit you want to blame the Israel Palestine war. You are going to see. Just wait. You're going to see this uh, this outlet called Kenyans.co.ke saying, "Did you see them trying to eh, trying to clear Ruto's name? That how Ruto uh, forbade this, and yet the oil increments are being done in Kenya. It's not from the source market because we can see we can see how how much how much it's costing. And you would have expected like now in 2020, oil prices dip below zero as producers forced to pay zero to pay to dispose of excess." There was an oversupply of oil in 2020. You would have imagined a caring government. Because now, don't forget that this Kenya Kusha shit show, they were in government during eh, during the Uhuru regime, but then they rebranded. They rebranded and became opposition. And then eh, and then now they start throwing whatever and everything. But, but it's all for Kenyans. Because Kenyans, it's so easy to dupe them. And this is what politicians have been doing since time immemorial. Which is why... You know, we, we should ensure that people born between 1940 and 70 do not not only get elected but don't even vote because you'll notice these they're so gullible they, they, they are so uh, can we say brainwashed by things like religion hmm? we, we, we were talking about religion and how it has been the cornerstone of the Kenya Kusha uh, corrupt regime it has been they have been using religion if you see them making their toxic divisive and polarizing statements they are always flanked in fact there is a cartoonist who captured it brilliantly they are always flanked by corrupt clergy behind there because there is a psychological element there are people they are reaching out to not me of course I, I myself I, I, I need i need i need my church especially the anglican church those churches the mainstream churches there's a place we say let's pray for our, our president and let's give him our wisdom and uh, may god give him wisdom and justice uh, is this wisdom and justice Ex extortion literal extortion of uh, the kenyan people through phantom companies hmm? this this now what we can do as kenyans since the government will never arrest you saw last night they were alcohol blow all over nairobi these guys will never arrest terrorists there's a uh, terrorist in lamu mandera 60 percent is under control of uh, al shabab but these guys all the police are al arresting alcohol blow so they have the police in the wrong areas instead of arresting the real criminals now since uh, francis uh, this this francis com and jogu and kiprotich limo will never be arrested you can arrest them where, wherever you are since the government officials who are copied in that letter professor jogu nandongo and all those people them by ps mohammed uh, liban since they can never be arrested for their extortion it's you to arrest them we can socially arrest them if you know their children if your children go to school with their children now you have to tell your children to tell their children that their father is a thief 
You'd stop glorifying these people. Stop going to their houses for parties. Stop being alcohol prostitutes where you are just going to be bought for free alcohol by people who are stealing and ruining your future. Arrest them socially. If they are in your members' clubs, these government officials who are making it unbearable for us to live. You can pass resolutions. You as young people, you're the majority. Kick them out of your members' clubs. Tell your children to tell their children that their parents are thieves, hopeless liars.